Realtors. Real Talk Podcast. And hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's episode of NARAB's Realtors Real Talk Podcast. I am Amber Lewis. And I'm Rob Pasker. And today we are here with Janae Ingram from Airbnb. Welcome, Janae. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. We're excited to have you. So you're at the 75th. 75th. Yes. What a time to come. What a time yes. to come. Yes. I mean, it is amazing uh, to be here. So I, I, I shared yesterday with um, C. Renee and the leadership. Mm-hmm. I spoke at a midwinter conference. It had to be maybe 10 years ago, m- maybe t- wow. nine, 10 years ago. Um, at the time, I was uh, working for Reverend Al Sharpton and okay. leading his organization. And I, I came and I spoke. I don't even remember what I spoke on, but I, I, it was in Florida again. Yeah. Um, and so I came to a midwinter. And that was the last conference, that, the first and last conference that I had been uh-huh. to. So to be wow. here back in Welcome Florida back. Wow. for the 75th, um, you know, it's, it's great to be here. And thinking about the history of um, what the founders essentially created um, the need for that even today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, it, it really feels like an inspiring moment to be here. What's been your favorite part so far of the conference? Oh, I mean, so to be honest, we just got here yesterday. Okay. So it, it really feels like we're, you know, settling into day two. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely feel like there's a family vibe. Um, being at the reception last night um, to me was like it felt like a family reunion mm-hmm. not only that I will say you know I've had the opportunity to be on lots of zoom calls and zoom presentations with um, President Pope and with Vice President um, Courtney Rose Johnson and meeting them like instantly it was like okay we're gonna hug like this is not no oh hi Mm -hmm. how are you like no i already know you come in embrace each other and that to me that family sort of environment meeting some of the youth that are here it really does feel like that family environment and it feels like um i don't know it just it those are the things that are sticking out to me seeing the young people seeing you know and embracing the leadership not having them be sort of standoffish seeing the way that people come together and embrace each other and show love to each other it just it's been amazing and i'm really looking forward to the rest of the conference absolutely i think you hit the nail on the head because it it is a family you know we come across we see each other nationally twice but it's like I'm seeing uncles and aunties. Yep. I'm seeing like, <laughs> like cousins. But you know we're unified by a common spirit of, mm-hmm. of service and advocacy for our communities, and it's it's nothing like it. I've never seen anything like it yeah. in the country. So I, I'm definitely proud to be a realtor, and I'm glad that you're here to experience it. Yeah. As well. I mean, listen, we do a lot of conferences. I'm I'm here, and and Kristen Jarvis West is in the room with me, <laughs> and we do a lot of conferences and. This one, de- we, we were both saying last night, this one definitely feels a little bit different. It's just, it's not, we haven't experienced this type of conference. And it, so whatever you all have in the Realtors Juice, you know, that keep on, <laughs> keep on serving it to us because we love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Airbnb. Yes. So it would be, you know, wrong of us to assume that everybody knows this what is Airbnb true. is. So tell us a little bit about the company. Yeah, it's true. I think it's it's weird. Airbnb is now a verb. People do say, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I Airbnb'd my house. Um, But there are still a lot of people who don't know what Airbnb is. And so Airbnb is an accommodations and I want to say sharing platform because it's more than just accommodations. You can share your talents through our experiences uh, aspect of the platform. But it's it's a platform that allows people to share either their homes or their talents with people who are looking for either accommodations or local activities that they can do either while traveling or quite frankly, while staying at home. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we are in a very different place as a company coming out of a pandemic than we were going into a pandemic. And I think more than ever, you know, this notion of a staycation has, is, is crystallizing or living where you work or trying before you buy. And these are all things that I think 
um, didn't re- maybe existed but didn't exist at the level that they do now. And so um, our company is really unique in that you are hosted by someone who is from the community, who knows the community, who can tell you where the best coffee place is mm-hmm. or tell you where to go to get your hair done, quite frankly, yeah. or mm-hmm. your nails done, or you know the best uh, shoe shine spot that you want to go to. These are things that don't exactly happen with a traditional, you know, sort of accommodations provider, um, and it makes our site and our platform and what we offer very unique because it really is about that connection that you create with your host. If you're going somewhere and you're staying for two weeks that host becomes your ambassador to wow. that place where you're staying. So I like to, to describe it in that way. No, that's beautiful. And I mean, I think that's key because you can go to a city and people are going to talk about the city, but you want, you want to know from someone on the ground that's actually plugged into the city and that's definitely an experience that you can get through Airbnb. It, it really is. It Absolutely. Really is. So broadly speaking, what are the, the benefits of being a host of Airbnb? Yeah, well, I think... That's one, Um, obviously, is the connection that you form with the people who you are hosting. Mm -hmm. And I am not currently a host. I'm on my hosting journey trying to to get there. (laughs) Um, But I've talked to so many people who either work for the company, um, who are hosts, or quite frankly, the hosts that I've stayed with. And that's one of the things, that's one of the things that a lot of them talk about is that connection. Um, Hosts who will say, you know, I had people who I've hosted before, they came to my wedding. Oh, wow. You know, to that level, right. to that level where, right. you know, or when someone's, I, there was a host in San Francisco and when his wife died, um, you know, he had travelers that had stayed with him that were in another country. I think they were from Germany who like reached out and sent him flowers and sent him That's cards. Beautiful. And so there is that connection element that really, you know, makes hosting real, and that's a benefit. Um, we, we often hear that a lot with people who are retired or who, you know, are empty nesters. You're feeling maybe a sense of isolation and even maybe now more so with um, the pandemic that is still persisting. People being able to remedy that social isolation through home sharing. But let's be real, mm-hmm. people wanna make money. Right. And that is a huge motivating factor. And we think that this, you know, quite frankly, we think this is the thing that people want to talk about is how do I make money? Mm -hmm. That was the thing our founders wanted to talk about when they created Airbnb uh, back in 2007. They were living in San Francisco, one of, you know, Speaking to realtors, you all know that's one of the hottest markets with the highest real estate in the country. Absolutely. Their rent went up and they were like, okay, how are we going to pay this rent? Like, if we don't pay this rent, what are we going to do? There was a conference that was coming to town and they decided with all the conference hotels being sold out, they were going to rent out air beds in their apartment, cook breakfast or give breakfast every morning to their guests. And they put it up for $80 a night. They had three people come and stay with them. And that was the birth and the genesis of Airbnb. And so when we talk about this economic opportunity, that is the foundation of the the company, quite frankly. It is the way that we were created. It was the reason that we were created. And we want to ensure, particularly with communities of color and the black community for me, Mm -hmm. we want to see communities embrace this. I personally do not want the black community to be left behind from this economic opportunity. It, it really is a way to make additional money, whether that is for covering the cost of your home, whether that be your mortgage or your rent, covering your home expenses, whether that be the taxes or quite frankly, just the upkeep that comes along with being a homeowner. Like I don't want to get on to my own adulting journey right. with being a homeowner, but you know there's always something that you that needs to be fixed or that can be bettered. Um, And so it allows people to do that or covering retirement, covering college costs, covering the cost of a vacation. One of the things that we're seeing people do now is when they're going and traveling on vacation, they're renting out their homes on Airbnb. So for people who are here at the Mm -hmm. NAREB conference, they could be making money on their home 
hosting some part of their home to people who want to come to where they're from. And so that's the real, you know, a real benefit. That benefit, and I'm, I'm going to stop talking and let you all ask me some other questions, but I do want to say this, that benefit doesn't only benefit the person who is hosting their home, but it gets spilled over into the community. So again, when we start talking about the nail salon or the shoe shine or the mm-hmm. coffee place, those businesses small businesses a lot of the times are reaping the benefits for from having someone stay on an airbnb because what the hosts are offering is not the traditional oh i'm going to send you to the starbucks down the street or some other big name you know company they're going to send you to the place that's a little bit off the beaten path that not everyone knows about everyone already knows about starbucks coffee Mm -hmm. no host is going to give you that information they're going to give you the small business that needs that additional infusion to keep going and to keep growing so it is really a whole ecosystem of opportunity that exists through Airbnb. And it's democratizing travel is the way that we, we sometimes frame it. And I love it because, you know, as a millennial specifically who has um, rented Airbnbs, number one, it's a phenomenal experience. Yep. Um, something that is completely different than in a hotel, right? And exactly what you say you know the little love notes that they leave you you know the little coffee shops the little snacks you know things like that and even just checking up on you to ensure that everything is going good and I just love the fact that to me they're really easily reachable yes so if anything does go wrong right they're there like in a jiffy to make sure it goes um, the way that you signed up for but outside of that you know and the things that we're thinking about I love the way you put it. It's about ensuring that communities are thriving and that ecosystem, right? So when we think about our clientele, and a lot of times, especially millennials, when they're saying, oh, I'm on the fence. I don't know if I really want to purchase a home. Mm-hmm. You know, what if something happens? What if I need to travel? What if I'm going to move? All those kind of things. And a lot of times the conversation becomes, hey, if you have a two or three bedroom, can you, you know, rent it out for Airbnb, yes. right? And so it becomes a part of the conversation when we talk about generational wealth mm-hmm. and wealth creation and diversifying your income. So I think that the overall mission of Airbnb and, you know, at the end of the day, it's about how do I make sure that I'm thriving, my community is thriving, yeah. and that's so key. That's key. And one thing that I do love and respect about Airbnb is that it's disruptive it's disruptive to the hospitality industry and it really yeah. creates opportunities for everyday people to monetize their, their dwellings and make money in the industry. So, and you know, Airbnb is leading that. Yeah. And then you see the same thing happening in the transportation industry. Yeah. Um, it's happening in all, pretty much every industry, yeah. you know, but Airbnb created that model and it's, it's, it's beautiful to see. Yeah, I, I, you know, you say it best. I, I think it's really uh, empowering to see that happening. And, um, you know, there have been people who have hosted on Airbnb who started doing it kind of like as a side hustle. Just mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just going to rent one room and ultimately create a whole business venture Mm -hmm. that allows them to quit their nine to five, to leave their traditional job and really pursue this passion of hospitality, to pursue a passion of being an entrepreneur, to creating generational wealth and financial freedom for them and their families. And that's, these are not anecdotes. I mean, I know these people, these Mm -hmm. are real people who Mm -hmm. are having this journey. And that is something that I think obviously hasn't traditionally been offered with traditional mainstream accommodations. It's like, you know, a lot of black businesses can't even get the capital to start a business. But through this, you're able to monetize something mm-hmm. that you already have in order to either infuse your, you know, money into your business or into your dream to make it a business. And that again, something that really drew me to Airbnb and and makes me passionate about my job and my work. Absolutely. So with all that being said, all of these benefits, the empowering, the disruption, the opportunity, what does it take to be a host? Well, I think to be a host, you know, essentially it takes one, a place to stay. So, but, you know, we've seen people do things and I don't know how real this is in this post pandemic moment, but like people have legit 
then like I'm going to set up a tent in my backyard. Now, maybe that's not for everyone, but there's right. somebody, you know, depending on where your backyard yeah, is, mm-hmm. if you have a nice sizable backyard and you are offering you know, either an off the beaten path experience or something that's rural, there's somebody that's going to mm-hmm. be interested in staying in that tent. Now you got to have to figure out what exactly you're going to offer and make sure that it, it meets the needs. But there, there, if you have a place to stay, there is a place for you on Airbnb. And so that is the first thing. I think, you know, the second is really just understanding what you're offering and being explicit about that. I think, you know, Managing expectations is, a, is an important aspect of any relationship, right? And so we want our host to manage the expectations, making sure if you're showing pictures, that those pictures are authentic, right. that you're not setting someone up for getting to a place and being like, this looks different, or this was not here. Don't use the old, you know, stage photos. Mm-hmm. If you have a, a, you know, a home that you recently bought, you're going to use the stage photos. But when the people show up, it looks different. No, you want to give people the authentic of what it is there is literally someone who is interested in staying in your laying on your sofa mm-hmm. if you have a sofa bed maybe in an enclosed space maybe there's someone who wants your private room the room that you use for guests when you know mama's coming to town or your sister's coming to town or whoever they want to stay in that space when they're traveling there's a whole home you know sort of notion that people want to stay in your whole entire house and maybe you have you know a, a house that was gifted to you through someone passing away and that was left to you that's something that you can do with that house so that you can keep it in your family and again talking about generational wealth this is a way to hold on to the assets that we have in our community so all of these things, those are ways that you can host on Airbnb, um, you know, managing those expectations, setting up the room, taking the, the photos. You can take the photos yourself. We, you, you know, you don't have to go out and hire someone to do it. We have really simplified the process over the years. And so now there's essentially 10 steps for someone to get set up on Airbnb. It's really intuitive. It's really simple. You go on and it sort of walks you through. We create prompts that ask you specific questions. And we just want people to get started. I think, you know, there's a lot of thinking and people have a lot of questions. We have a whole program now called Ask a Super Host, where you get paired with someone who actually is not just a host on our platform, but is one of the top and best hosts on our platform. And you can ask them questions. You can get to know, like, what is it that allowed them to be a super host and really start you on your journey. And that's what we really want is for people to start on that journey. I think what you're saying is like, just making the first step, right? The first step, Like, yes. be intentional, have a strategy. Yes. And, but let's take a little step back. Sure. Too. Let's talk about, you know, I think that we all know that there's something about space creation, yes. especially for people of color. Mm-hmm. And with Airbnb, we want to make sure that we're intentional and inclusive yes. with that. Can you talk a little bit about, number one, how Airbnb is ensuring that people of color feel safe yeah. in the space that they're renting. Yep. And then number two, how you're becoming more intentional about inclusivity of people that look like us when they actually want to sign up. Oh, this, these are such important questions, and I'm, I'm glad that you brought them up. So, I, you know, it's no secret that in 2016, Airbnb dealt with a really challenging time. Airbnb while black was something that was exploding on social media. Mm-hmm. And the company really said, this is not what we want. You know, our founders, when they created this, this platform, never imagined that this could happen obviously the world that we live in, it did happen. And they jumped right on addressing it. So one of the very first things that we did, we hired a woman named Laura Murphy, and I will always call out her name. She is a mentor and a shero of mine. Um, but she was, she used to be the, the head of the Washington Bureau of uh, the um, ACLU, longtime civil rights activist. And they hired her to do a civil rights audit of our platform. It was considered to be one of the first uh, audits of this type. Okay. And really, she went from top to bottom to say, okay, what is it that Airbnb can do to address these issues? And literally, I mean, we've made so many commitments and we've done so much work since 2016, including creating what we call a community commitment. 
And so many of you know when you join any sort of website or platform, you'll get your standard terms of service. You'll get a standard, maybe maybe standard, non-discrimination policy. We had those things. We had a terms of service. We had a non-discrimination policy. But we created the community commitment, which is really a point of friction. It's a modal blocker. It stops you from doing anything else on the app until you agree. And what you are agreeing to is to treat everyone in the Airbnb community fairly. You're not going to discriminate against other users based on race, religion, gender, a whole host of protected categories. Right. And if you do not agree mm -hmm. to that commitment, then you cannot use Airbnb's platform. 2.5 million people have said that they don't agree with that. And we have removed them immediately. They are not a part of our community. And so for us, that was a big investment of saying, this is the type of community we want to be. And if you can't be that type of person, we don't even want your money. We, your money is no good here. And so, you know, that was an important step. I think what we know is that situations still have happened. And we have created a lot of policies that protect our users, protect communities of color and other marginalized communities, because it's not just, discrimination doesn't just impact one community or another. Discrimination happens to a lot of people. And we have created a whole set of policies to prevent and remedy that when it does happen. Um, to the second part of your question, what are we doing to ensure that we are attracting communities of color, the black community in particular. I think obviously making sure that we can protect people Correct. is an important part of it. I also want to just make one point that I, I going back to the, what I was saying in terms of policies. One of the things that I want to continually ensure people know is if you experience or think that you are experiencing any sort of discrimination or bias, and I'm going to talk directly to the cameras, mm -hmm. if you think that you are experiencing discrimination, please report it. It allows us to keep a record. It allows us to investigate. It allows us to make sure if this person, in fact, is discriminating, that they are removed. That is really important to me, and that is something that a message that I want to continue to carry forward and that I want others to continue to carry forward. If you walk away and you say, I'm not using Airbnb anymore, that person who potentially discriminated against you is still in our community, and we don't know it. So please tell us when that is happening. After making that very, very important point, you know, being intentional about our work and making sure that we are talking to the people who we want to come to our platform is important. With our community, it is about trust. Mm -hmm. We can't trust you. And you know, we've had a lot of situations that have eroded trust and our trust in systems and our trust in institutions. And the job that I have and that Kristen has and that our team has is to make sure that we are proactive in showing up, that we're not just showing up when there's a problem. No, we want to be intentional and say to the black community, we want you on Airbnb. We want you to be hosts. We want you to be guests. We want you to have the full experience. We want you to be employees. You know, we want you to have the full experience. And so a lot of our work is about having these types of conversations, right. ensuring that we are, you know, active parts of NAREB, that we are not just here for the, the convention, but we're here after the convention, that we're having these opportunities with other organizations like NAACP and National Action Network, um, where I used to work, oh, and, awesome. and National Urban League, and mm -hmm. where we are speaking, again, proactively. We're talking about how we're keeping mm -hmm. you safe, and we're talking about ways that you can make money, and we're talking about ways that you can empower our community, the black community. I think, you know, I don't, I think there's a lot to unpack here. There is. And it's, actually invigorating because as a company or an enterprise to say you know we're willing to leave money on the table if people are not actually going to sign up for the things to make our hosts feel safe yep. our um, members feel safe yep. that's a big thing right and you know money speaks it <laughs> at does. the end of the day and I just think that that says a lot so I think I can speak on behalf of myself and Rob specifically and NARAB that we're so excited to be able to have you as a partner. The fact that you're intentional and you're thoughtful about the partnership and then, you know, our members, hey, you hear mm -hmm. it here first, right? At the end of the day, if you want to sign up, there is a space for you 
to be included. And so I'd like to say thank you for that. And thank you for sharing, you know, the breadth of information that you have today. Okay. Is there anything last that you like to say to our members that they can take home with themselves? No, I just, I want everyone to know that Airbnb really wants to embrace you. That, that That's the yeah. one thing. There's yeah. a space for you. At, if you're not ready to host mm -hmm. your home, think about hosting an experience. I mean, we, yes. we have so much talent in our community, things that we can share, whether it's how to cook collard greens like your great grandmama, <laughs> or whether it's how to you know make jewelry or whatever. We mm -hmm. have so many things that we can offer. So be a host on Airbnb, that's one of the things. And, and just come to our community. I, I think, I can't say it enough, we, we, we really want to be a community that reflects the broader society and that includes mm -hmm. communities of color for sure. So please join us and we're really excited to be here at this conference and looking forward to the 76th. Already, I know yeah. we, ain't, oh, we, yeah. we haven't finished this one, but we are excited for this yeah. long-term relationship Absolutely. with NAREP. Absolutely, well we appreciate you sharing this paradigm shifting information. I've never thought about hosting an experience or Airbnb. I always think, you know, places to live, but experiences, realtors, you know, we're all entrepreneurs. Yes, right. Tap in, tap in, tap Creatives. in. Creatives. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Janae. Thank and, um, you both. Thank will we be you. seeing you at the Black Tie Gala tonight? You will see me there. Oh, My yeah. former boss is being honored, so okay. I will be there. And yes, <laughs> very happy and having a good time. That's wonderful. Awesome. Yeah. We'll, we'll you. see you then. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you both. Yeah.